Now, I was going to preach something because, I, you know, I started out with going on untrodden ground. I was talking about walking in places that you uh, never would walk. Uh, but yet God told Joshua, get out of the funeral business and cross this Jordan because there's a promised land. Then I went from there by making the gospel your personal gospel. Because see, the only way those things can happen is that God has become very personal with you. Then I went into uh, opportunities or maps of direction. Did y'all enjoy that the other day? I said, did you see Brother Copeland? He was holding on to me for dear life. I mean, he was holding on. I was trying to, hey, Jesus, man. <laughs> but it was so wonderful. It was, such, it was just a, such a unique service to see what was going on. And I was going to preach this, this wonderful sermon. In fact, I was going to deal with a statement called discipline is time's lesson for eternity's business. Wow. Write that down. That'll just help you. I'm not going to preach it, but I'll let you meditate and concentrate on it. Discipline is time's lesson for eternity's business. So I've learned that discipline is a very important thing in your life. Love in its purest form is discipline. Whom you love, you chastise. And I'm not talking about beating. But what I'm saying is a discipline is a life that is thought about, cared about, and then delegate it. So, you know, discipline is time's lesson for eternity's business. But as I was listening to the brother Jerry, the same thing began to happen to me that happened to him last night. He began, he, he had studied to do another sermon and the Lord began to deal with you, but smite not lacking. You have to do what the Lord says to do. Well, I didn't want to preach. This is my theme for the year. If you're one of the partners with my ministry, I, I have a theme every year. And I had, I said some of this at the uh, Eagle Mountain International Church about a couple of, I think a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. And I said, well, Lord, I, 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 he said, just do what I tell you to do, Jesse. I said, I'm yours to command. I got it. So if you've got your Bibles, go with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6 is where I want to get to. As you're turning to 2 Kings, chapter 6, I've learned in January of this year before COVID started or anything else. I said, Lord, what theme would you use for 2020 that would you have me to say for me and Kathy, as well as to the partners of our ministry. And uh, we have a global ministry and things of that nature. And he said, great expectation or expectation is the secret. Great expectation is the secret to abundance or results eternally. Great expectation gets great results. And then after the COVID thing, when it hit and we had to shut down, no one could fly, go anywhere, do anything. I said, Lord, why would you give me a, a theme knowing that this thing would be a lockdown situation? called great expectation gets great results. He said, don't you really need to expect now? He said, because everything you do to make a living or to make this ministry run, you can't do now. Because you are a traveling ministry. You travel all over. And people see you and things of that nature. And I said, yeah, I understand that. So, and we've had so far this year, in fact, what is this, August? July was the, fi the biggest financial month I've ever had in the history of my ministry. I'm telling you, it's amazing what's happening. And, and yet I'm preaching more now without traveling. But boy, I'm going to start. So as soon as I leave here, I go home. Then Kathy says, well, since you're off Sunday, could you preach at the church? <laughs> and then Monday, I got to do social media and TV. Then Tuesday, I got to be in Blakely, Pennsylvania. Now I'm traveling again. Then Wednesday, I got to be in Odessa, Texas. And then Thursday, I get back to New Orleans. And then Friday, I'm in Nashville. And Saturday is the rapture. I certainly hope so, my Lord. Certainly hope so. Hallelujah. What a blessing of the Lord. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So if you were at Eagle Mountain, you heard some of this. I'll put some new things in it called Great Expectation Gets Great Results or Expectation is the Secret to Abundance Eternally, not just once in a while. I want you to write this down. Faith is the womb where expectation takes its first breath. Faith is the womb where expectation takes its first breath. Your first breath of your existence was in the womb of your mother. Even though it was fluid, it was receiving oxygen from her blood. Now, when you were born, they slapped the fire and shocked you so bad you went, <gasps> and you sucked in physical oxygen. I don't know why they beat them little babies. That's not right. <laughs> I mean, they could kind of massage them a little bit, you know. Hello. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> Just knock your brain. <laughs> you know? Faith is the womb where expectation takes its first breath. So everybody breathe right now. Now exhale. 
See, you brought in everything you're believing for. And when you exhale, you got rid of everything you don't want. See, God filling you up. Second Kings chapter six, got a little greedy king from Syria who wants to take out Israel. There's always somebody wanting your stuff. There's always, there's always somebody saying, you shouldn't have what you have and we ought to have it. Well, you know, that happens. I guess that's a man's kind way of thinking But after he fell. I want to read 2 Kings chapter 6. I'll start reading with verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. In other words, this is where I'm going to set up for the ambush. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for the Syrians are come down. Notice the man of God. The king of Israel, verse 10, king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not only once, but twice. Now, therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he said to his servants, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, I got a leak in my camp. Sounds like Washington, D.C., right? <laughs> Can't keep nothing private. I mean, I mean, my God, you got journalists asking him, uh, ask anybody like the attorney general, anybody, what did you say to the president? No one, you don't talk about conversations you have with the president of the United States, whether you're in government or not. That's not protocol. You don't do that. He said, somebody is leaking this information to Israel. And I'm irritated. You understand? Could have been a Democrat. <laughs> Could have been a Republican. <laughs> Could have been a Libertine or whatever. We don't know, but somebody is messing up. Yeah. Verse 12. One of your servants said, None, Lord. O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Whoo, that's listening, right? There's a man of God. There's a prophet. If you say something, God will tell him what you say it. Your father became a prophet last night. So you, Jerry Ann, and your new husband, don't say nothing when you go to bed. Because <laughs> he going to hear it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> These prophets have ways of very sensitive ears. Look at this, boy. Now that's it. They're going to get to the angle. Sign language. <laughs> Let me read verse 12 again. One of his servants said, None, my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of the Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. He said, Go and spy where he is, and I may send and fetch him. It was told him, Behold, he is in Dothan. In other words, he said he wants to, he wants to captivate this guy. Watch this. Therefore he went, horses and chariots and a great host, they came by night and compassed the city about for one man. Yeah. Now they're going to use them against Israel, but they got to get this prophet man. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Now what, do you go by what you see or do you go by what God tells you to do? Now, they know this prophet, that if this prophet can hear the king talk in his bedchamber, they shouldn't be having too much problem. Yeah, yeah. What shall we do? The prophet, verse 16 said, fear not, fear tolerated, faith contaminated. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Yeah. Now, why couldn't they, the, uh, the servants understand it? Because they had closed eyes. They've been living in the bottom of life. The deeper you go in the ocean, the fish have no eyes because it's total darkness. There is no light. Hmm. Verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. I want to go back to verse 16. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Faith is the womb where expectation takes its first breath. You see, you got to understand no matter what happens in life, there's always more with you than anything that's coming against you. It makes no difference what you see. 
It makes no difference by what you feel. You don't deny any of it. You just deny it's right to affect you because of expectation getting great results eternally. I don't have bad financial days. Now, I don't mean that pridefully, but in 44 years of full-time ministry, I have never had a financial deficit. Why is that? Because I got more faith than you? No. I may not have, I don't think I have any more faith than you, but I might have a little more obedience. Maybe so, I don't know. Better to obey than the sacrifice. Most people are around their lives always sacrificing something. All I'm doing is obeying something. Because there's more with us than there is with them. So it doesn't make any difference. So when the COVID thing shut me down, all my staff was not worried in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I gave them a 10% raise. I even told that, but one of my directors said, whoo, boy, this is it this time. I said, have you ever been without a check? No. I said, and you never will. Now, it sounds arrogant and cocky. No, that's great expectation. Getting great results eternally. It has nothing to do with what the world is doing around me. I'm in the world. I'm just not of it. Do you see what I'm saying? And how could you say that? There's more with us than there is with them. Well, my director of finance, my God, we got, we got to work overtime to, 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 to get it all in. And I don't mean that pridefully, but what I'm saying is there's more with us. And yet I had to pray for someone. Lord, open their eyes that they may see what's around us. Seraphims, cherubims, archangels. Christ in us, not on us, in us. The hope of glory. You see what I'm saying? So much around you, it makes no difference what's out there. I don't deny what's out there. I just deny it's right to come into my world. Jody, my daughter said, Dad, everything you touch prospers because I create my world and then I walk in it. I don't wait for you to create my world. I don't wait for the government to create my world. People said, you know, you know we, Jerry, we could have got some stimulus money. You know, but, but, you know, different thing. And I don't know what y'all, I said, we will, I don't need the government. The government needs me. So they said you could extend your taxes to July the 15th. I said, they're going to need some money because all this money you get is imaginary money. It doesn't exist. It's just a number on a printed page with printed money. So I always pay. Always. I do very well. I don't mean that financially, but I always pay. So I paid them April the 15th. I said, y'all going to need this. <laughs> so my financial director said, you know, boy, we, <laughs> there's a lot we can do. We have a lot of employees here. You could do this. And I said, we don't need them. We will never need them. There's more with us than there is with them. Actually, I have more money than they do. Now, y'all doesn't get that at all. Y'all did yeah. Because everything they got is debt. You got $26 trillion worth of debt. They got nothing. I am debt free. What I got belongs to me. What they got belongs to China, the Federal Reserve, and everybody else they're borrowing from. See, you, you got to see how you, you got you to look at things in a different perspective. Am I right? Jay, Jay, Jay's a Wall Street. I'm, he, I, I'm like, I like, I love Wall Street. I got some, some friends on Wall Street, uh, you know, uh, I mean, hedge funds operators. They say, you got to quit that preaching business. I said, no, I ain't doing it. They say, you understand this street, but you need to get on the street. No, I don't need to get on the street. The street's in me. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. There's more with us than there's with them. It's your perspective on how you look at things. So I, I want you to write this down. We must elevate our mindset. How do you do that? By believing in something, not wishing in something, but knowing something. We must elevate our mindset by believing in something, not wishing in something, but knowing something. See, when you know in whom you have believed, you're not surprised when you get it. And you're not surprised if the trouble comes too hundredfold with persecution. You know that's going to happen, so why should you be shocked? Because see, you already know in whom you have believed. Now you're persuaded. That's another level. That he is able to keep what he gives you, know what you commit to him. What you're willing to give him in your life, whether it be spiritual, physical, or financial, or all three. 
You see, that, that is faith in the womb where expectation takes his first breath. So you should be expecting more. Our God is my witness. This is Friday. By Monday, you ought to have at least 30 fold back at your house by the time you get there. Or 100 fold, depending where you're, at, where you're living at. I mean, and expect it so much that people just think you're slapped crazy until you get it. See, because you've elevated your mindset to believe in something, not just wishing something, but knowing something. Now, how this all works is not complicated. It's called simplicity of faith. Write this down. Simplicity in faith is the answer to do what? To change difficult and even impossible situations into belief. Simplicity in faith is the answer to changing difficult and even impossible situations into belief. I made an investment on January the 30th. I bought a phenomenal aircraft. I bought it out of the overflow. Oh, I'm gonna get some, uh -uh. Well, ain't no telling who'll be there. It may be ABC tomorrow, CBS, who knows? I, <laughs> think I, you think I give a flip? <laughs> and I don't mean that arrogant. I don't have enough of these fools. Didn't use any of the money that I'm believing for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just pretty nice little um, investment. Yeah. And I gave away a, 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 a Falcon 50 jet. Am I correct, Jerry? You saw it. Jerry's flew, Jerry and Karen flew with me from um, Dallas or from New Orleans all the way to where we went to. We went to Italy and England. <laughs> we went all over the place. And they were in the plane. Sold it as a seed. Everybody thought I was slapped crazy. I ain't crazy. Come on. Why? Because there's more with me than there is with them. Yeah. So watch this. Now this is doing COVID. This is doing lockdown. Now I love when I got an impossible situation I'm looking at. Jay, I like me a baby Christian. I ain't looking for some of them matured ones because some of them are so matured in doubt. <laughs> so matured in experience. I want a baby Christian holding their diaper. I said, I, and I found me one in my ministry. And I said, listen, I want you to believe with me that I get this money back that I just sold uh, and purchased. Said, okay, boss, I do it, boss, I can do it. I said, yes, you can. <laughs> See, that's simplicity of faith that can change this difficult situation you know, in this or this impossible into belief. So we started believing. Now, what I didn't tell her, I was thinking about maybe two and a half years. Okay, that was January the 30th. Uh, da, 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 June, June the 1st. Yeah, June the 1st, I got the money back. Hallelujah. Wait, wait, you don't understand. I got the plane and the money. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe in being a baby Christian. Now, when I told her, she went, oh, Lord. She said, what's next? <laughs> now, I'm going to use that as a good business thing toward the other thing. Yes. Now, instead of saying, oh, Jesus, please, 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 please. I'm not James Brown. <laughs> I wish I was. I'd walk I could sing. I love James Brown. I did. Isn't I'm ahead of the curve. Hmm. Hmm. So I came and I was preaching at Eagle Mountain. So I called Jerry and Carolyn. I said, hey, uh, y'all come to the house. And I said, since I'm here, you can just fly home with me. And I said, you know, and he said, they said, oh, OK, this is on. Uh, what a couple of Sundays back, or whatever, maybe three Sundays. Something. Anyway, so Carolyn and Jerry sitting in this, and, and Carolyn going, Oh Lord, <laughs> look at this. Man, I just wanted to get up and do my lean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, I'm not bragging, giving God glory. God did yes. this, God brought it to me. Yes. He brought it to me. Yes. I wasn't even asking, mm. I even didn't know how to look but I had simplicity of faith yeah. is the answer to change a difficult and even impossible situation to believe. I'll just give you the, the conversation. I was in my study and, and Brother Copeland just called my, call my. Now I don't carry a cell phone, which 
aggravates everybody. They have to call Kathy to get to me. And, and they'd say, why? Because I want some peace in my life. I just want some peace in my life. But Brother Colton knows my home phone. I have a home, you know. So he, called, he said, hey, Jess, it's kind of, I said, hey, get up. What's, up? what's up, what can I do for, what's up? He said, you know, just like this out the blue, you know, when we were believing God for my Citation 10 and you was believing for your Falcon 50, he said, I bought an interim plane. I bought a, a, a Citation Bravo. I said, yeah, you did. He said, didn't you buy an interim plane too? I said, yes, I did. I bought a West Wind too. He said, I thought so. Bye. <laughs> just hung up. And I thought, okay. I guess he just wanted to talk for, I don't know, 45 seconds. <laughs> that didn't take long to say that. Watch this. It wasn't 10 seconds. Kathy walks into my study at the house. She says, Jesse. I said, what? She said, you know, when we were believing God for our Falcon 50. Now, she didn't know I had just talked to Kenneth. I said, yeah. She said, we bought an interim plane. I said, yes, we did. We bought a West Wind 2, which was a fine, nice plane. She goes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 45 seconds, she's out the door. So I'm sitting here. And the Lord said, what am I saying? I said, you said at the mouth of two witnesses, let every word be established. This is two witnesses. So as she gets about halfway, it takes a while to walk across my house. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> anyway, I went, Kathy! She comes back. I said, find me a Falcon 900. She don't know how to do that. She says, okay. Gets out a iPad, hits some, boom, up comes the richest people in Texas, yeah. billionaires. Oh my God. I see this picture. It's the only plane I've ever seen that it looked better than the pictures. Because oh. they always doctor the pictures. Mm. Just way well, they do it with women too. Oh. <laughs> hey, it, I'm getting out of town in a few minutes. You, you know it and I know it. It happens at Jess and Friends Ministries all the time. Kathy comes in and said, art department, I don't like the way I look, so cut some of that off and do this and do that. Boy, they just make her, and she still looks good. I said, but they never say that about me. They just let it hang all over me. They don't care. <laughs> it was the easiest thing. And see, God was setting me up to make an extra $4 million that I was not expecting because there's more with us than there is with them. See, that's great expectation. See, you will never see faith. Write that down. You will never see faith, only the results of it. Faith is, imp is invisible. You never see the wind. You only see the effects of the wind. That's why Jesus said, you don't, people don't even know where the wind goes. It goes wherever it wants to. You can't see it. It's invisible. It's the same thing with faith. Now, faith is the subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, so you can't see faith. See, a lot of people want to come to a believer's convention over all these 30 years. See, we want to figure out how them guys do what they do. What's that formula they got, man? Because they just know how to work that thing. No, no, it has nothing to do with that. See, they're looking for something they can see. See, well, you will never see faith. Only the results of it. See, when you're expecting, eyes will be open to see results before they show up. You keep reading this in 2 Kings 6. Not only did God open up the servant's eyes, but he opened up the king's eyes. He said, let's just, buy, let's just have a big dinner. Let's have a banquet for the king of Syria and all these guys, and we'll sit down and, have, and eat dinner. Now they come and they kill everything in Israel. They, if you read the whole chapter, you'll find that they sat down, they ate dinner, they enjoyed themselves, they became friends. See, and when you think something can be bad, it can turn around to something the most amazing thing. Go ahead, you read the rest of the chapter when you get back to your room or whatever. You'll see, good God, the king of Israel made a banquet for him. Elisha said, let's just feed him. Isn't that amazing? You know, there's some people that can feed you. I'll never forget one time I was at the Grand Walea Hotel in Maui, Hawaii. Oh Lord, Walea. It's called the dry side of Maui. It's a beautiful hotel. Lord, if you miss the rapture, go to the Grand Walea. <laughs> it's nice. I met the owner of it, a multi-billionaire. Talked to him. It was a blessing. Well, the, some prince of Saudi Arabia came in and he rented the top floor 
which is 5,600 square foot, just the suite for three months at $15,000 a day. Now, this is many years ago. And then he rented the, <laughs> the seventh floor for his staff, which is $7,500 a day for three months. There ain't no shortage of money. So evidently he didn't like the food. Now I'm there. So he asked the Grand Wailea if he could uh, bring in his chefs and people and because they eat a lot of late at night and, uh, you know, to cook for him. Well, you going to turn that kind of a man down? No. Nope. Yes, sir. That'll be fine. Well, he gets the idea to feed everybody at the Grand Wailea. Wow. There's 3,000 people at the Grand Wailea. So they sent an invitation, put it on each one. Uh, the Prince of Sony would like to uh, invite all of you to come and eat tonight. Now they have ice carving and stuff. I'm walking around thinking, somebody thinks I don't know the Prince of Saudi Arabia, Lord. I mean, food, it was gorgeous. I mean, it was, he fed the whole hotel. And food I never eat before in my life, and, but never seen it, but it was very, very tasty. And done just phenomenally. I mean, you even dressed up a little bit. Normally in Hawaii, you got t-shirts on shorts, but you don't want the prince, you know, so you're just walking around. I'll have a shrimp. <laughs> I mean, it was, I'll never forget that long as I ever lived. He didn't know me, didn't have to. I didn't have to know him to accept the invitation. See, you don't have to know why God wants to bless you. Just accept the invitation. Do you see what I'm saying? When you're expecting, eyes will be open to see results before they show up. See, supernatural perspective creates peace in the heart. Write that down. Supernatural perspective creates peace in the heart. I'm talking about great, great expectation, getting great results. Supernatural perspective creates peace in the heart, and then it clears a pathway or a path of peace in life. Supernatural perspective creates peace in the heart and clears a path for peace in life. Isaiah 1, 19, if you be willing and obedient. Just gotta be willing and obedient. You'll eat the fruit of the land. You just, just whatever. Yeah, but what does it cost? He's not asking you to pay for it. Asking you to believe for it. Just being willing and obedient. Supernatural perspective creates peace in the heart and clears a path for peace in life. You see, if you be willing and obedient, Isaiah 1, 19, you shall eat the good of the land. So I am willing and I'm obedient to eat the good of the land, which makes church people mad. Why? I'm just being biblical. Why do you have such a nice plane? I'm being biblical. You've given away a $20 million jet? So shut up. Because that's what it costs brand new and I didn't pay for it because I serve a Jewish God. I don't pay retail. Now you do what you got to do. There's two types of people you need to know, Jews and Italians. You got it. If you know Jews and Italians, you can make it in life. <laughs> and I was raised with Italians, not Jews, but I was raised with Italians. And I have some great Jewish friends. In fact, I do business with some Jewish people. And I really, if you don't, listen, if you don't know any Jewish people, make some friends. I'm telling you, they have a perspective that a lot of people don't see. So that supernatural perspective creates peace in, in your heart and clears a path for peace in life. See, so peace means what? Possession of adequate resource. That's in your ministry. That's in your personal life. I had the Lord one time. He said, I want you to sow this seed, but you're not going to receive a harvest on it. I, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this the devil talking to me? He said, no, this is me. This is for your grandchild. I'm setting her up and using you. And a good man make an inheritance for his children's children. Mm -hmm. So Meredith watches me. She calls me grandfather. She calls the other side grandpa. Calls me grandfather. And she'll come, she'll go, grandfather, how much money you got? And where is it? I want to see it. I said, well, why do you want that? She said, you said everything you have belongs to me and mom. And I said, that's correct. She said, well, I want to see it. I said, well, one day you will. Not only will you see it, you will handle it and touch it, but not today. But I expect you to keep expecting because by the time you do see it, it'll be bigger than what you see today. 
You see, God said, you're going to sow seeds for a third generation. I said, I'm yours to command. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It? Yes. Yeah, but what about all, all the stuff? Oh, no, no, no. Don't, you don't understand. There's more with us than there is with them. See, I'm just willing and obedient. See, you got to understand something about believing this stuff. Christianity isn't natural. <laughs> it is. It started with a miracle birth and ended with a miracle resurrection. It started with a virgin birth and ended being raised from the dead. It's just not natural. It's not, it's not intellectual activity. It's not range and research. It's not induction and reasoning. What it is is simplistic faith, like a child going to a refrigerator, opening up to get something to eat. They don't care. They don't need to know how much it takes for you to keep that refrigerator full. They just going. When Jody was uh, living with his mom, she'd invite her friends to come and, you know, teenagers eat, man. And I just buy everything they want. They wanted pizza. They wanted, you know, I, I, I just buy it. But then one time she had one of her friends walking out my house with two sacks of groceries. <laughs> she was about 16. I said, uh, uh, Amy, how you doing, sweetheart? She said, Jody told me to take these groceries. I looked at Jody, she said, Dad, they don't have a lot. So I thought, figure, you know, you got a bunch. I just told her, just take a couple of bags full. I said, enjoy yourself, Amy, just have a nice time. I said, there's some cake, did you miss that? And I said, oh, I forgot, and she went back and got the cake. <laughs> and I like yellow cake, uh, chocolate frosting. I like, it's the cheap cake, or Duncan Hines, whatever you call it. Yeah. That yellow cake, in fact, boy, that's a story, huh, Kathy? Oh, Lord, Jesus. We, well, diets can get you in trouble. We was on a diet, Jerry, and me and Kathy, boy, and we were watching a <laughs> commercial came on of Duncan Hines, where they take the fork and they pull the chocolate, and it goes, have you ever seen that? And I'm going. And I looked at Kathy and she's got that same look. She said, you want one of those? I said, yeah. Jumped in the car. Burning rubber. Went, got some Dunkin' Hot chocolate cake mix and started making that thing. Boy, and you could smell it. And it's getting worse by the minute. You're, oh, Jesus, Lord. So I thought she was going to cut me a slice. She comes in, the whole cake. She says, watch this. Foom, cuts it in half. Here's your half. Here's my half. Am I right, Kevin? Cut the thing right, Tracy, in half. I said, Kathy, I like cold milk. She didn't get me a glass. She got me a half a gallon. Put it back. So, man... We eating this cake. <laughs> and I'm drinking out the jug. <laughs> I'm not lying because it was so good. And I guess we ate about three quarters of it a piece, boy. I mean, we're like kids. We got chocolate all over. It was a wonderful day. <laughs> Until. All of a sudden, I heard my stomach go. Rrr, 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 rrr. Then I heard something louder than mine. I looked at Kathy and she went to one bathroom and I went to the other bathroom. And that's the end of the story. That's all I'm going to say right there. <laughs> that literally happened, my God. <laughs> uh, that cake didn't last long. But <laughs> well, Christianity is natural. Started with a miracle birth, ended with a miracle resurrection. What I love about this great expectation, it creates passion. For what? Not for darkness, not for poverty. Great expectation creates a passion for light, which does what? Makes you see more clearly. Light helps you to see. Light, not darkness, light. It creates passion for light, which makes you see more clearly. I like to see clearly. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. I can see clearly. Come on. Hey, a bunch of old people in here. <laughs> Why do these songs come popping in our heads? You know, that's our life. So I'm a passionate man. Boy, when I believe in something, I believe in it. 
I'm a passionate man and I want light. I want to see the end result before the end result comes. So I read the end of the book so I know what would happen between the pages. You missed it there. You don't understand what I just said. I read the end of the book. So it don't make no difference how much persecution, trouble, and going on. It's going to get to the end where Jesse's in heaven, blessed. And on earth, blessed. His will be done where? As it is where? So I'm not shocked that there's more with us than there is with them. Do you see my point? When you understand this passion, you'll understand this statement. Expectation is an energy. Say that expectation is an energy. Now, what does it do? It cracks through the barriers of life. Now, how does expectation cracks through the barriers of life? Well, it's done by thinking. It's done by speaking. And it's done by acting. It's done by thinking. I like what President Trump said to Ivanka Trump one time. I heard him say, it's one of the phenomenal statements. I told that to Bill Johnson yesterday. He said, my God, that's a great statement. He said, Ivanka, you're going to think anyway. You might as well think big. And I thought about, you know, that's right. You're going to think anyway. So why would you waste your thinking on something small? You're going to think anyway. Might as well think big. Now, how does this expectation, which is an energy, cracks through the barriers of life? It's done by thinking, by speaking, and acting. So if I want something, or if I want to create a world, I go to Romans 4, 17. I call it those things would be not as though they were. Then I add my piece to it until it is. I go to Romans 4, 17. I thought about it. I spoke it and I act on it. I call it those things would be not. Why? Because God said to call those things would be not. And God called those things would be not. So if he did, then how come I can't be a therefore imitator of God as a dear child? Now that can be spiritual, physical, or financial. If I want something to work. Because great expectation gets great results eternally. So I expect this to happen all the time. Constantly in every area of my life. Which people think is arrogance or cockiness. And it has nothing to do with that whatsoever at all. What I was talking about, and I can understand what Brother Copeland was saying. Uh, do I help the poor? I help the poor way more than I help the rich. But I don't talk about that. Why? Because I like to protect the dignity of people. Nobody wants to know they're losing their house. That's embarrassing. So you take care of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it don't mean to do where you are, just to be the blessing God wants you to be. So I call those things to be not as though they were. I made up my mind that I would always tip more than what the meal was. That's why I don't have to wait for a restaurant, especially in New Orleans or Metairie. But I walk through the door, them waiters, wait. <laughs> why? Well, they, they work hard. They deserve, they need, they need help. I'll never forget one time at P.F. Chang's, I'm just sitting there. The Lord said, you're going to bless this woman today. I said, okay, sir. He didn't tell me what I was going to do, brother. I had no idea. So we, are, we had six people, three couples. With, man, you know, we are hors d'oeuvre people. We like hors d'oeuvres and all that kind of stuff, you know. By the time we finish eating hors d'oeuvres, we can't eat the entrees. But it's just the way, well, we did it. We went to lunch with Jerry today. Jerry, boy, he's an hors d'oeuvre person. Okay, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? He didn't ask me, what do you need? And don't take too much. One chip. That's all you got. No, no. No, no. You go with Jerry and say, what do you want? What do you want? Hey, you want some spinach dip? Okay, we got that. You want some queso? We got that. What, 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 what do you want? Before you know it, the whole table's full of stuff. It's me and Kathy and Jerry and, and Tony. And my, we just enjoying ourselves. And I'm trying to pay the bill. He said, you don't pay the bill in Texas. You don't let me pay for nothing when I go to Louisiana. I said, oh, okay. Now watch that. So we go there. This girl was a phenomenal waitress. And she says, you're like, you're like a glass of full ice beside your uh, uh, tropical tea. Is that correct? I said, how'd you know that? She said, every waiter in here is talking about you right now. <laughs> and they said to treat you kindly. I said, it's prophecy. That's true. <laughs> she said, what's prophecy? I said, you'll know after a while. <laughs> so she brought all the stuff and then we ordered the entrees. And My Lord, there's no way we could eat the entrees. So we got to get bags. This is when they could put it in the bag. Now they bring you a bag or a box and you got to do it in you. You know, you do it yourself so it's good to touch you. 
something like that. Anyway, to make a long story short, we finished like that. So I said, what do you do? Uh, how long have you been working at Pierre Chain? Well, I'm going to school. I said, oh, you are? Yeah. I said, where well, are you going to school here in New Orleans? Yeah. She said, I go to Loyola. And I look, Loyola's a very expensive college, a university. I mean, <laughs> it is, you know. Loyola and Tulane or LSU, but especially Loyola is expensive. And I said, well, that's great. I said, I said well, you know, what is your major? She tells me all that kind of stuff. And I, so I'm just thinking like this. I said, well, you can get my bill. And as she turns around to walk off to go get my bill, the Lord said, pay her tuition. I said, at Loyola? <laughs> so I would prefer Nichols State University. Nichols? <laughs> Loyola? Okay. So she comes back like that, you know, and I mean, she hands her the bill. And uh, so I, I, I pay the bill. I give her a nice tip on the bill. I said, how much is your tuition? Oh, it's expensive. I said, I figured it would if it's Loyola. I said, but we're going to take care of that. She, she, she almost just, she had some dirty plates. She almost dropped them. I said, don't drop them. Don't drop them. Why? Well, the Lord said to do that. Evidently, he figured I could handle that. So he put me in that situation. Oh, well, you know, that went all over. When it became my birthday, every waiter, every waitress, and every cook at P.F. Chang's signed a birthday card for me. <laughs> now, I don't say nothing. I never told them. If I, think for, I just told you. But I mean, boy, that stuff gets around. And they say he's a preacher. <laughs> you would think they would say it in a bad way. No, they said, no, this is a good preacher. <laughs> they ain't never heard me preach one time, but my money talks real loud. It was a blessing. It was just a simple blessing. See, how do you do that? Thinking, speaking, and acting. That's Romans 4, 17. That's that energy of expectation, cracking that barrier of life. He called it those things that be not as though they were. See, never speak it if you're trapped by the enemy. Write that down. I'm going to close with this. I don't want to hold you too long. Never speak as if you're trapped by the enemy. See, that's what Elisha said was doing. Oh, Lord. Oh, master, what shall we do? Good God, we're in trouble. We're all going to die here. No, 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 no. And God said, all you got to do is open his eyes because in just a few minutes, he's going to be eating dinner yeah. with the guy he thought was going to kill it. Yeah. Do you see that? You never speak as if you're trapped by the enemy. See, we're inmates of two worlds, a world seen and a world not seen, a world of time and a world of eternity. Let me say it again. We're inmates of two worlds, a world seen and a world not seen. A world of time and a world of eternity. You see, I'm going to live forever. You see, I'm preparing myself for what I'm supposed to do when, G when I stand in that glory position before God, because I'm going to do exactly what I did when he saved me. What will thy have me to do? I, I, the apostle Paul, when he got knocked off the donkey, what do you want me to do? You're, not just, you're just not on the road to Damascus, you know, walking around. There's something to be done. See, that's why I believe in great expectation. That's why I told you when I opened up in my session to walk on untrodden ground. So if you never could live debt free, you will now. Well, why? Well, number one, we, I preached that. Number two, Jerry smite the fire out of it last night. And you sowed a seed toward that. So I mean, you're just a winning combination going somewhere to win. There's no other choice in the matter. In fact, don't choose nothing else. Don't even think nothing else. If he tries to come, say, so, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not my thoughts. My thoughts are lovely, just good, report, and pure and virtuous. I think on these things. I don't think bad times. That doesn't mean bad things don't happen. I just don't accept them. I don't deny them. I just go on about my business. But what, do you, what would you do? Now, I don't make provisions for failure. So I told my father, Financial director, we will never use the government. Do you understand? We don't care if the government wants to give us a billion dollars. We ain't taking any of it. Okay, why? Because separation of church and state. You stay on your side of the wall, I stay on my side of the wall. You built the wall, so stay on your side. I have nothing to hide, but I have a lot to protect. What? You. You're giving. Many of you are partners in my mission. You're giving. 
I have to protect that. I have a right by law. I have a law that I have to do that. It's kind of like a medical record. You can't just share a medical record with someone. Doctor going to get in trouble if he does that. Well, it's the same thing with your donations. Those things are private business. I've even had the finance, Senate, finance committee come at me. I said, you ain't getting anything. Well, you'll go to jail. Oh, I'll have a jail ministry. Uh, I said, if you touch me, the anointing of God is on me and you don't want to make my father mad because he'll make you an offer. You don't ref- and he don't care if you're a senator or not. You do not touch his kid. He said, it'd be better that a millstone tied around your neck and cast in the sea. You better not touch these babies. You don't touch us. I mean, I told that to Jody's bar friends. I said, I know she likes you. I, I don't care for you. I said, I ain't gonna lie to you. Let me help you. You bring her back the way you picked her up. You understand? I said, no, no, no. I ain't play- I, I've been a boy. I know, I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're seeing. But look at this face. You don't want to ever see this face closer than it is right now. I said, that's my most precious possession. Do you understand? Do I make it clear? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I said, if you think I'm bad, talk to her mama. Her mama will just flat eat your lunch in a second. I'll have a little mercy on you. (laughs) Not Kathy. Wow, well, that's our only daughter. We got to take care of her. Well, God says that about Jesse. I got to take care of Jesse. I have to watch it, watch over him. Not that I'm doing foolish things, but he, but he loves us. I mean, when Jer- uh, Jerry and Carolyn sent us a beautiful picture of their great granddaughter. You talk about a pretty baby. You can just see it through the picture. I could see it in her little face. <laughs> Grandkids ain't getting nothing. I'm getting it all. <laughs> Hallelujah. All attention is on me. <laughs> beautiful child. I mean, this little baby is gorgeous. Now, when I was, we, me and Kathy were so proud of Jerry and Carolyn. I thought, now that's the greatest miracle. Now, she just got here. How old is she? What, three months? Two months? Three months? She just got here. She hadn't really known her that well. But I promise you, Jerry is one of the finest men. You try to hurt that baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to have to go to Mark James first and a bunch of other people. But you don't do that. That ain't going to happen. Why? Well, because that's part of you. Now that baby, great grandbaby, will do some things exactly like her great grandfather will as she grows up. And if Jesus tarries and we go by the way of the grave, people will say to that wonderful child, you know, your grandfather, your great grandfather used to do just, he held his mouth exactly. He had, it, why? Because see, you, you, you never get rid of us. No one can ever get rid of you, brother. You got children? Grandchildren? Okay, see, no matter what happens, you will always be there in them. Help, let me help you. No matter what happens, God is in me. I I never get rid of my, I do things like God. Holy Spirit said, you know, the Father did that just like you did. Because you're part of that DNA. Are y'all enjoying this? See, this is great expectation, getting great results, which is the secret to abundance eternally, not just sometime. I don't expect bad things to happen. Bad things do happen, but I don't believe for them. And and if I don't like what I see, I change it. See, sometimes, and I'm going to close with this, we're walking blindfolded in the midst of truths and realities. I've seen the Christian church walk blindfolded right in the midst of truths and realities. God been trying to pay, just do things for people and they just refuse to let him do it. And they're walking blindfolded right in the midst of truths and realities. But you see, if you'll stand and believe God's word, if you would activate his word and greatly expect the things, spiritual, physical, and financial, and I'll tell you one more story. I had a wonderful man that I met in North Louisiana. Uh, there's Shreveport, then there's Bossier, then there's Houghton. We, you know, all of those little towns up there. This man came up to me. 
He said, Brother Jesse, I'm going to build a church. Now, this is many, many years ago. I said, okay, watch this now. He said, it would be such an, he thought I was a big preacher, you know. He said, it would be an honor if you would dedicate it for me. I said, I tell you what, when you build your church, but, so I thought they were in the middle of the building process. You know, I didn't know. I said, call me. And I said, even if I'm booked, I'll work something around. Because the Lord just quickened me, do that. I said, and I will dedicate your church. What I didn't realize, this man literally built the church with his own hands. He was the pastor of the church, but he worked a day job. He knew how to work steel and stuff. And I mean, I mean, his hands were cut. And I mean, he built that church physically. It took him, what, I think four years or something like that. Just build it. I didn't know. I thought, it was, I thought they were in the middle of a building. You know, and all that kind of stuff. He built it himself so they could save money. Well, four years passed. And I got a phone call. But Jesse, do you remember me? I said, I certainly do. How you do it? He said, uh, are my church is ready. Could you uh, dedicate our church? I said, I'd love to do that. When would you like for me to come? He said, well, how about not this Sunday, next Sunday? Would that be fine? I said, yes, sir. That would be fine. I said, okay. And I said, I didn't realize that he had physically built it with his own two hands. Beautiful builder. Beautiful. So when I got there, two weeks later, I flew in there. The place was, I guess, how many people you think it's at? Kathy, 250? I would say the max, probably. It was full with the district attorney, the sheriff, a Bossier City entry report. They knew this man, that he's a very honorable man, just a normal, hardworking man. All right. I noticed when they didn't have any musicians for worship, so they used the cassette tape and they sang. Remember that guy? So I'm just going, I said, and it was a beautiful church. I mean, perfect. Just nice. And the boy, I mean, the place was just back. I thought, this man is highly respected in this community. I mean, he just makes a normal living like anybody else does. You know, he just works hard. You know, that's it. Always wanted to be a full-time pastor, but church couldn't afford that. So he just built it himself and did whatever he could. And people loved him and district attorneys and sheriffs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, standing there and so I'm sitting there and the Lord said, now this is the opening Sunday, the dedication. Now I showed you how most people, they don't dedicate the first Sunday. They kind of get the, get the kinks out, you know. <laughs> you get a few weeks in, but he don't know that. He, but he's such a good carpenter. I mean, everything's working. And so I'm sitting there and I have no idea what the Lord said. He says, I need to talk to you. I said, well, speak, Father. What? He said, when they hand you the service, pay off this church. I said, how much they owe? <laughs> he said, you have enough. I said, okay. I had no idea. No idea. So he said, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us, uh, you know, evangelist Jesse Duplantis. And I talked to him four years ago. He said, I guess I should have explained it to you, brother, but I... I, I, I'm, I'm, I work for a living like anybody else in my congregation here and uh, I just built this church and a lot of them helped me build it and, and, uh, and we're so proud of it. So would you please come and take the platform? So they, all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, man, I'm in the presence of greatness, this man here. You don't know him. The world doesn't know him. But that community knows him. He's captivated his world. Where he's at there. Actually, it was in Benton. Is it Benton, Kathy? Is that right? Benton, something like that. Make a long story short. I get up there. I said, have you borrowed money on this church? He said, well, yes, sir. He said, it's, it's a, a huge sum. I said, well, how much is it? He said, well, we borrowed $100,000. I thought you built this for 100000 No, he said, it cost us more than that. But we, uh, you know, we just know how to build. We know how to, you know think and how to do these things. But he said, $100,000 would be like $10 million to these people. I said, okay. So I, 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 I spoke for a few minutes. I said, well, I said, um, what is your heart's desire? Oh, Brother Jesse, we'd love to give the missions. So, you know, uh, we can't do that now, but we, we want to give the missions. I said, how much is your note on your church? And before he could answer, I said, well, I don't really need to know that. I said, Kathy, you, give, you got a check. 
Kathy says, I got a check. I said, give this man a check for hundred thousand dollars. We're going to pay this church off today. People busted out crying. The district attorney goes, the sheriff goes, he starts crying. Everybody's crying. The sheriff's not crying. The district attorney not crying. They got this stunned look. Because you see, I'm one of them preachers, prosperity guys. Oh, they, they just come in and take all the money out the community. That's what they think. I could hear their thoughts. District attorney, sheriff. You know what? I said, now come on up here and I'll speak. And he's just crying. He said, well, you know what? I gave him the check. I said, now go pay it off. The banker was there also. He, he goes, I've heard about this, but this is the first time I've ever seen this in my life. He said, I'll bring the papers tomorrow and we'll cancel the note. Amen. So he gave him the check, the hundred thousand dollars to the banker right there. So here's still the district attorney and the sheriff. They just can't get it. See, they've seen a miracle and can't believe it. They've seen a miracle and they can't believe it. And you know what that pastor says? You know what we're going to do, congregation? We can start giving the missions. We was going to have to pay this note every 30 days. So we're going to take what Brother Jesse paid off. We're going to still pay the note, but we're going to give it to missions all over the world. So God answers two prayers in one thing. Now he was expecting and believing God, but he didn't mind working hard with his hands. You know, the things that he needed to do. Well, I, I preached the dedication service. I mean, it was a blessing of the Lord. And I said, uh, this is just the beginning, Danny. I'll tell you whose name was. His name was Danny Moffat. Great guy. Great guy. And he said, I, uh, I don't know what to say. I said, well, let's just say it together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, but this is just the beginning. Of course, they got, the church is a lot bigger than, you know, they built, you know, given the missions. And he, went, he became a full-time pastor within three weeks. They put him on salary. See, God wasn't just finished. He just needed someone to obey the first step. And whether that be something small or what you think is big or whatever. And I thought, my Lord. And we had the most wonderful time flying home. Well, I found out through the vine that you, at that time, this is many years ago, you better not say nothing bad about Jesse the Planners with the district attorney of Bossier City and Shreveport and that sheriff, because they say, let me tell you one thing. I was there. And I saw this evangelist pay that church off, gave that check to that You don't say nothing about that man. So if you want to go to jail, you just say something bad about me. And Shreve, Shreveport and Bossier, my God. They couldn't get over that. They just were shocked. They said, why did you do that? I said, well, the Lord told me to do that. Wow. I'm flabbergasted. That's the word he used. I said, well, I guess the reason why, because you don't see it enough. There's so many people could do these. There's so many people, but they will not. But you see, I just happen to be willing and obedient. And boy, I mean, my ministry began to grow. This is many, many years ago. It just began to grow and grow grow and grow and, and, and it's still growing leaps and bounds. And I mean, at pridefully, God has been so good and gracious. So what are you expecting now? Well, I close with this. Seven low orbit, seven high orbit. Oh boy, that's in me so strong. Whoo, that touches me. Six billion dollars, I don't care what it costs. We'll get them satellites. Boy, I can see God expand. What it is, I see the mushroom cloud of prosperity doing this for me. I'm going, oh, but not of destruction, of blessing. Carry me up to the high places. Not to show off. I don't care about that. I just want to complete my destiny and reach my destination. So I leave you with this. What are you expecting? Because Jerry Savelle said God has no limits. And he don't lie because he's the most reverend doctor, Jerry Savelle. <laughs> and you saw me kiss his hand, and that's the la last time I'm going to kiss his hand. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs>
See, so what do you believe? What are you expecting? It makes no difference whether it's spiritual, physical, financial, all three. So would you please quit asking God for needs and start telling him what you want and let that persecution come and make no excuse for the blessing of God in your life, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, because he's going to supply all your needs. So that's just, you don't even need to, don't let that even open up your mind it's to take up space because his word is so true. You got in your house, didn't you? Is it paid off yet? Nobody will be. Now, you can wait 30 years or you don't have to. The time frame is all has to do with us, not with him. See, that's what I'm talking about. Great expectation gets great results eternally. So I expect when I get home, there ain't no telling what I'm going to find tonight. (laughs) 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 Things happen to me. They think that I am lying. They may say you, they, they, those stretch, I don't stretch my stories. I mean, I've got people throwing thousands of dollars over my fence. In hundred dollar bills. Throw it over the fence. I got to go out there before it rains on it. I'm telling you. In the malls. Shopping bags full of cash. In restaurants. Why, Lord? I can trust you, Jesse. You passed the money test. I said, well, let me help you, Lord. Six billion. I got to get a dump truck, but I'll put it in that one because I'm taking it to New York. We'll set this thing up and we'll go. Well, if you don't think I got a witness, Jay, you like this? Got a box in my ministry the other day about this big. He said, for personal, for Brother Jesse to plan us. So my uh, people looked and they said, uh, do you want us to open this up? You know, security and all that kind of stuff. And they normally do. And I went, oh, I'll open it. And with the left, there was a little card attached to the top of it. And he said, Brother Jesse, the Lord told me just to build this for you several years ago. And I just been missing God. And uh, I want to show you what, what you believe in for is going to look like. And I opened it up and he built me a satellite. It says JDM satellite with the things out like it. I went, oh, I got a point of contact. I got something I can physically see. I said, look at this thing. So I put it right next to my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I got the Dr. Pepper right here and the satellite on top of it. <laughs> and I, I walk by, I go, oh, God. I, and the Lord said, Get ready, get ready, get ready. I said, you've been talking to T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And I looked at that thing and I, and I mean, the man knew what he was doing. You can see this man knows what he's doing. And I'm looking at that thing. Then I hold it up and I start doing this. And I thought, wait a minute. I saw Jesus is coming in the east. I can film his coming. And you know, there's gonna, people going to do just like that attorney and just like, they're going to see him coming to claim. Yeah, somebody do. It's like they say they went to the moon, but they really didn't go. They ain't going to believe that till he busts that eastern sky. And when he breaks through that atmosphere at 3,500 degrees and he ain't burning up because he's hotter than the fire. And we're going to be able to fly and breathe. And we'll we'll lift off. I think I'm going to make a couple of trips around the planet first. And I'll be standing in line waiting for my assignment. Where you want to go? Andromeda. What? Andromeda. I want (laughs) the galaxy Andromeda. Send me there. Oh, Lord. I'm a Star Wars man. I'm space man, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Jesse the Planets. I can just see myself. I can't wait till I get up there. And I told that to Kathy. I said, do you want to get me something? She's always trying to buy me something. You never have, you know. I said, 
when they perfect this thing, I'm going up. If it's virgin, Elon Musk, I don't know, whatever, I'm going up. I want to look back and see this planet spin. Well, Kathy said, you ain't going now until it perfect this thing. I just can't wait to see that. I want to look at this planet spinning. Then I want to go to the moon. And I want to do what one of the astronauts did. He took Holy Communion on the moon. Did you know that? He did. He's already. See, God's covenant's already out there. And we don't even know it. Would you stand to your feet, please? Give Jesus a great God bless you. I preached so long. I apologize for taking holding you so long. Ah, what a blessing.